Hey folks, Matt Donald here. Subscribe to my Patreon! I don't have anything else to say. Patreon.com slash Matthew Donald. Roar. Growl. Snarl. Bellow. Welcome to Paleo Bites, the podcast that's Iguana done. <laughs> My name is Matthew Donald. Each week, I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and write a Jason prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week, I'm joined by someone who is just Iguana getting started. <laughs> it's been a Regan. How are you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm good. Sorry about the voice I'm eating at the same time we're recording. Uh, it's okay. I, I, I will take a slurp of my podcast juice as... Matt Seifert and I call it in our old podcast. Mm. Mm. Good stuff. Very mm. professional, you and I. So, <laughs> um, I uh, this is terrible news I found out recently. I think I'll leave this in because some people might wonder what's going on. So for the longest time, I had two podcasts. I've had this, Paleo Bites, and I've had The Ritwit. Uh, yep. So The Ritwit, it's gone. It's lost media. <laughs> ah, what? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a few episodes of it available still on YouTube. But so mm. when I stopped doing that podcast, I stopped hosting it which was a mistake. I should have kept hosting it online because I thought, oh, since I'm not uploading the episodes, I might as well not pay to host it. But then I didn't realize that would get rid of the ones that were already up there, too. Uh, so they're so no they longer online. Raised. And then my hard drive crashed. <laughs> oh, no. So almost all the episodes, except for the ones that managed to make it onto YouTube, are gone. They're not just like, oh, the podcast isn't going anymore. They are lost media. <laughs> and I'm Damn. really mad. Because, like, oh, there was some good stuff there. There was some good... I, I wrote a lot of good skits there uh, for episodes. The 100th episode skit was pretty ridiculous. So, mm. And, yeah. But Matt and I are going to hopefully uh, start a new podcast um, and start over, start fresh, start anew. Because <laughs> what did the Rip Rip do again? I don't recall ever listening to it. It was just about writing, writing tips, writing oh, yeah, tips yeah. and tricks. So, uh... It's good stuff. I, I really enjoyed it. We did end it after having to write a new skit every week and having to do all this stuff every week. Uh, and especially when, unlike Paleo Bites, it was just one co-host. So we had to, rather than j just me and a bunch of other people, so I can work it around with them. But no, since it was just him and we both had to sync our s s schedules together, it was it was a lot. And it was a reason why we stopped. So, But um, it's been enough time, and I, I've learned m enough lessons on how to properly use this that I think I'm willing to start anew. So so I'm, we're going to do a new podcast and I'm going to back it up this time because <laughs> backups are very important. Particularly the age. Just get like a one terabyte external hard drive and put it on there. I mean, exactly. I've got one, although yeah. I can't use mine because it hasn't been used in years and now um, it keeps asking to format whenever it gets plugged in and when it's done the format fails. Oh, man. I think oh, I've gotten this a few mods because I used to use it to bypass um, my s previous um, desktop um, from in between this one and the laptop. Oh, no, the laptop, uh -huh. sorry, was in between the two for years. But um, I would store data on it so it didn't take up actual RAM and that on the main PC, but that ran into issues of where if it, um, you had to reboot the system or it had an update, some of the files would be on the main PC while most on the hard drive, so then when it tried to access them, if they were missing, it would go bonk and not work correctly. Oh, no, this just didn't sync, I guess, or like, yeah. yeah. Well, it's more oh, even man. when you're installing your, all the games onto the external parts, and it would still go onto your main, like, C drive and stuff. As right. it turns out, and not just programs files. I don't claim right. to understand oh. how it all works. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's amazing we have all this stuff with like digital data and like trying to save all that stuff when really we we as humans started out as creatures like Australopithecus. And speaking mm. of which, <laughs> speaking of which, go ahead. Uh, flawless segue as always. So uh, Australopithecus, it means southern ape, um, probably because uh, that's where I mean, that's more southern than some of the other apes. Why is it called southern ape? Uh, <laughs> we probably should have looked this up. <laughs> yeah, it comes from the Latin Australis, which means southern, and yeah. Pithecus, which yeah, means so, ape and great. And so that's why Australia's got its name, because it means southern land. Yeah, exactly. And also the Boreo Austrius, which is the same, which is the southern lights, was supposed to. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Austro. 
Aurora Ostros rather than Aurora Borealis. The Southern mm. Lights rather than Northern Lights. So, um... It looks like uh, maybe it's because they were found in Southern Africa and other, like, uh, hominid relatives were found further north. So that's probably the reason. I will say that's the reason until being told otherwise. I might also factor in because, let's face it, unless you count the gibbons and the um, orangutans, which do count, but they're over um, in another part of the world. Um, Right. Chimpanzees and gorillas are generally north of the Sahara zones, like Central Africa and West Africa, not... East Africa, to my understanding, I could be wrong. Right, no, yeah, they're mainly in Central Africa. They're south of uh, the the uh, Sahara mm. for sure. Um, but yeah, so um, anyway, so type uh, it's like the ape. It's a hominid, which is also known as the great apes, which includes chimpanzees, gorillas, mm. orangutans, and humans. Uh, size four to four point five feet slash one point two to one point four meters tall. So mm. a little bit, quite a bit shorter than us on average. Um, Children size usually like. Intermediate age or yeah. junior high for the states. Yep. Uh, diet omnivore. Um, very much uh, picked fruit off of trees, but then also, you know, ate some meat, uh, mm. um, which helped Believed to be its our brain ans- size. What, one of our ancestors that like that branch because we don't know which Australopithecus um, line actually leads to us. Although again, uh, data could have changed. Right. But um, we n- believe that's when they started mastering fire by picking burning sticks and cooking food or even using it just to keep predators away from their nesting areas i've heard that the the fire usage of fire started with homo erectus i i, th- I don't think australopithecus did it yet in fact it says here that it, it's debated the australopithecus hand is atomically capable of producing stone tools oh, that's so interesting. yeah because i think i remember hearing the homo habilis which is i think the first Human, uh, well, no, there's Homo erectus, and it, uh, yeah, Homo habilis didn't really. If, well, no, Homo habilis was first, yeah, it was, it was or ho- Homo rudolfensis, mm. which is um, rudolfensis yeah. is a. I won't bother well looking it up, but from what I remember from the Walking with Caveman um, book, which I got, and yeah. the documentary, um, yeah, they treated it as sort of like a bigger, more apified version of the. Um, also, a pivot scene, so a habilis is towards mm-hmm. human, but not quite. So, not quite erectus, but not quite um, Australopithecus. And then, of course, right. you had the Pranthropus, which they call Boise Eye and that. But um, I think right. there's debate with rude offenses, like whether it's just a variation in gender or age or thing. You know, like how there used to be a lot of Triceratops species, and now a few of them are growth stages or just variations in the horns. Well, that's kind of like what happened with uh, Apatosaurus because like there was there was 12 species of Apatosaurus and then now there's 10 because two of them have been reassigned back to Brontosaurus as of 2015 mm. so and then you had the same with Iguanodon where a lot of them are now they're distinct enough that like they're like Dakota 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 yeah. or Europa uh, no I think Europosaurus is a sauropod but or like what's that one mm. called uh, begins with the B oh no it begins with the E I'm sorry Eolambia mm. that's the one I was thinking of uh, time. Speaking of which, when, when did all this happen? So, early Pliocene to early Pleistocene, four point five to one point two million years ago. There's that an means some of them live thing. long. Um, if yes. they include Paranthropus as um, an Australopithecine instead of their own group, from what it's saying here, they might have actually made it through to zero um, point six million years ago. Wow, they're getting so, close to this and Homo sapiens coalescing. <laughs> like. The, the the earliest the date for Homo sapiens is going further and further back, <laughs> so it's uh, like we used to think it was like a hundred thousand years ago. Then we think it's two hundred thousand years ago. Now some people are saying it's three hundred thousand years ago. There's a lot, a lot of inconsistencies and in, um, no, no, not inconsistencies, um, indecision there, but in uncertainty because we're learning more and more. But all it's doing is um, not only is it reinforcing the fact that we evolved, but it's um, uh-huh. and came from close relatives of the great eights but it's also making everything else all muddled because there's just so many branches and roots and stuff coming off it's like hang on which is where now <laughs> exactly like with homo floresius for example without being away from this um not because it's a bit more primitive and usually an organism um by the evolution isn't you know a one-way street generally in no organi- it's just whatever happens doesn't to work get more time. primitive um unless mm-hmm. anavitism shows up which is rare but, like, they're not sure whether it's an offshoot of Homo erectus or another earlier human wave or it might have been a convergent evolution of an Australopithecine branch because apparently there are theories that some Australopithecines did come out of um, Europe, um, out of Africa, sorry, like Europa 
Pithecus or whatever it's called, or was it Gratiopithecus or something? Um, the one they found in yeah, Greece. Yeah, there's a lot. There's Pithecus. Yeah, there's <laughs> Oreopithecus, which is hilarious. <laughs> Oreo. That's what. The, or as in the the chocolate cookie, or is it chocolate? I don't know what those are. <laughs> no, I've heard of those because they're also sticks. I was eating one before. Like chocolate oh, Oreos thing, are good. But, um, yeah, that's well, not. It, a it surely has a different of. reason. Oh, it means hell ape, like Oro, like Orodromius, like uh, oh, that, right, right. uh, right. So I mean, that just means mountain runner. So yeah, or Oreo Pithecus. So those or Oreos. When you eat Oreos, you're eating mountains. Keep that in mind, listeners. So, <laughs> uh, so there's also Orano Pithecus. Uh, there's a lot of Pithecuses. Pith Pith Pithecuses. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sal Salahinathropus. It's just interesting to look at the uh. The the branch lean to humanity because like when I'm um, looking up, uh, have you heard of Purgatorius? No. Okay, so when looking, I looked this up for uh, the last Megazoic book. A spoiler alert uh, for me my Megazoic books. The final book involves a great battle that ends up creating an explosion that causes the uh, crater in the Yucatan, and the dinosaurs have to leave after defeating the villain. And when I go back to Earth after showing the dinosaurs in space, I show a Purgatorius. And uh, it's like a squirrel like little a little squirrel like mammal that's like uh, gathering sort of nuts and other stuff and like and it's like and it talks uh, how, it's basically saying like the legacy of this critter will extend in ways beyond what it could comprehend yet. Eventually its descendants would form their own civilization. The first one to right. rise on Earth since the dinosaurs. However, you probably already know that story. That's the final words of the final Megazoic book. And uh, it's because Ur Purgatorius was the very first it wasn't a primate yet, but it was a proto primate and it lived in the Cretaceous, and then into the Paleocene. Oh, that kind of rodent-y, shrew-like type, where the, it's on the way to primate, but still kind of indeterminate. Yeah, it looks more like a squirrel, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it lived, it lived, yeah, from 67 to 63 million years ago. Was one of the people, one of the animals that survived the uh, meteor. <laughs> so, and it's the one that evolved in us, so thank God it did. Uh, and evolved into Australopithecus, which, by the way, location all throughout East and uh, South, South Africa. Um, described in 1925, pop culture appearances, Walking with Beasts, obviously, Walking with Cavemen, obviously, and many, many, many different books about cavemen. You probably have a <laughs> few that you, you know, for sure. So, well, I've got some ones that are, that are inheritance, or that I might as well be inherited, given granddad's gone and grandma's got dementia. Oh, man. And then I've got the Walking with Cavemen one, but, yeah, point being, yeah, I've got some caveman books. It was interesting. They're de they're, they was definitely interesting to see them in Walking with Beasts, and I think it was also an interesting choice to make them CGI rather than. I know they do, in Walking with Mo Cavemen they don't. They make they use makeup and do like a Planet of the Apes style, yeah, uh, just not or as two thousand one style, two thousand one thing. Which I don't like the, the CGI models. They look a bit off, um, uncanny valley, in, a bit uncanny valley. But like maybe they did that to make it look more consistent with the uh, with the rest of the animals. Um, it there. could have been. It might just have been because they're. Um, or do they kind of change it for walking with caveman by using people in suits and costume, as you just said? Um, I think they were yeah, worried uh, about because the... Australopithecus, um, Lucy species, Afrarensis, or is it Africanus? So, um, mm -hmm. um, they are a great deal shorter than your average um, European, Asian, African, what have you. So, and I don't think they wanted to cast a bunch of kids in the role because that would make the acting more difficult. So, well, you don't necessarily I could have to do, be that. Wrong, could do like what Lord of the Rings just did. That's my guess as to why they CGI'd them. Probably to keep them. You could do Lord of the Rings and like mm. do scale, like make it so that like because there are ways to show make them look smaller than they actually are, like to the scale, like even like in mm. uh, the Hobbit where it's but mostly just a bunch Willow of dwarves. That back um, pre Jackson, yeah. Yeah, but like even in the Hobbit movies, where it was mostly mm. just dwarves and Bilbo, one of the ways they look small, despite being normal-sized mm. actors, is they gave them big, oversized clothes and big shoes, which obviously they couldn't do with Australopithecus, I guess. But mm. they, like, but there are ways, like that party scene in Fellowship of the Ring, Bilbo's birthday mm. party. It's just short people and Gandalf, and yet they all look short because of <laughs> how they. I think it must have I mean, come down to budget because it's been on the BBC isn't going to fork out a massive amount for that when the CGI is in and of itself is already expensive. You can imagine how yeah, much more expensive costumes did Walking would with be. Beasts, did Walking with Cavemen have any CGI? Oh, I think it just reused models from Walking with Beasts, didn't it, most of the time? Yeah, or, um, and I, don't I have haven't watched the majors, but there is definitely some CGI, like when you see um, Gigantopithecus. Yeah, so... 
Which, rather um, than being depicted as a big orangutan, was depicted as a big um, gorilla, basically King Kong. Well, that's Kong. what they used to think. That's why it was a big gorilla in um, in mm. um, Kong, like King Kong, because around that time we th- like. But now, since we know it was more orangutan based, there was no way um, mm. a Gigantopithecus descendant, like like whatever was Kong. What's what's his what's his scientific name? <laughs> something Kong. Mega Primitus uh, Kong or something. Oh, Mega Primitus Kong. That's right. Yes, uh, it wouldn't have or been something a, very close uh, so gorilla like. Yeah, like it wouldn't have been a gorilla like. It would have been orangutan like, which would have been interesting to say. <laughs> so, but to be fair, that's also the only King Kong to just basically be a giant gorilla. Most of the others are like gorilla men. <laughs> so mm, that would justify half of what Kong was doing in the Kong um, Peter Jackson Kong though, if um, he was more orangutan like, because orangutans um, don't knuckle walk anywhere as much, and while they spend a lot of time in the trees. They can also do a lot more of the handsy stuff that Kong does, whereas gorillas just tend to use hands for walking unless they're sitting right. down. Right. And plus, uh, an orangutan, I think, would do a lot better on the Empire State Building. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah. Anyways, uh, Australopithecus, though. So, um, it's it's just interesting to see this. Uh, ev- like, there's so many different steps that, like, turn hmm. hu- the. Uh, you know, squirrels like Purgatorius into humans. It's like you have to almost have like in order to have the grasping hands, you need to almost be evolved from an arboreal creature that goes onto the ground. Mm. So something that can use its claws to climb, and then when it gets on the ground, but keeps its hand, its hands are you know you free to do other things. Like there's so many specific things that have to happen in order for this to evolve into humans. <laughs> so for, for, hey, it's just very fascinating for, to see. Um, uh, fluke with um, climatically or maybe not a fluke but like the common theory is that um, the spread of grassland and the drying out of the forest to savannah is what pushed them to come down and start walking upright because right. they needed to be able to see over the grass oh that's true yes yes and, and then from yeah, there um, brain start increasing because behavioral complexity because their hands are free the posture's got to well, increase so that's sort of um, what- one of the reasons to, why octopi are so intelligent is because they have only a year to learn how to use all their tentacles. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, so most same with us. Uh, die after breeding, don't they? Yes, I went. To, I went to a, uh, a couple years ago. I went to an octopus uh, farm, uh, not farm, a laboratory in uh, Hawaii when I visited Hawaii a couple years mm-hmm. ago, and it, it, they, they studied the octopi there. And then you got to be with them. They all had names, and you got to play with them. You know, they wrap you, they wrap your little tentacles around you. Uh, Yep. It was really cool. You had to be careful, though, because they could bite, <laughs> apparently. So mm. And suckers can hurt in and of themselves, too, because they got little hooks. Oh, that's, oh they, they grip hard. And also, they could spray you with their little tube thing that comes goes from side to side, like, if they wanted to. Oh, but some stink, of them were playful. Bro. Some of them were shy. Some of them were, uh... They felt really weird on you. But anyways, the point is, like, they only lived a year. Like, they mentioned one of them was an old man at, like, ten months. Mm. I'm like, oh, poor guy. So exactly. old. <laughs> ten months. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's it's amazing like the brain power that came from Australopithecus. Like it's just so it, hmm. it's like looking at like the, the taxonomy is it's it's I mean obviously it's, it's such an interesting form of study because this is where we came from. This isn't just dinosaurs or like exactly you know mammoths. This is us. This is where so of course there'd be more interest in something like this. Hmm. And it's ridiculously convoluted. There's so many different Australopithecus species. There's so many different homin- hominids and. Kenyathropus, Paranthropus, um, yeah, Homo, uh, or, or, Oronun, what's Oronun? <laughs> or, Oronun Tunius is a postulate's early species. Oh, so it's postulated, so it's, it's a hypothe- hyp- hypothetical species? <laughs> hmm. Oh, no, there's, there's a phalange, okay, so. Uh, looking at this African hominin timeline graphing on Wikipedia, like, you've got, um, Australopithecus cadaver, Australopithecus Romanus, Australopithecus Amensis, Australopithecus Afarensis, and an Africanus. Yeah, Africanus. I think I'm looking at Dirimida, Bavri Galzi. Are these all Platops? And then Kenyan there's a really Africa. late one, well after all the others, unless you count um, the Pranthropus lines like the same do, which is Australopithecus Sibida. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or Sabida or something. I'll bring it up. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. But there's and just... It's, yeah, and it's... It's a South African species, too. Well, that's cool. It's just... It's so fascinating, the evolution of humans. It's just like how... And, like, it was such a dangerous world for them, too. It wasn't quite like... um In the Walking with Beast episode, it made it seem that, like, they were uh, hunted by Dinophilus or the Sabertooth. They were hunt- No, we were hunted by leopards. <laughs> 
that was our and main we were killer. vulnerable we didn't have the advantage the homo species do once they start mm. using um hand axes or do they probably could have um mobbed like carnivores off their kills by running at them um and confusing them then to grab chunks of meat climb the tree which you do see right. in walking with beast right exactly so uh um <laughs> this is a fun thing i learned and again this shows the how much of what we know of what our current understanding is uh, our current living as humans in the modern day is compared to is how based on how we evolved so like the reason why some people are night owls and some people aren't is because back during days like this, uh, hmm. where some of us had to sleep, but in some parts of the group, the troops would have to stay up and look out for the leopards. And that's because that's why some people are night owls and some people aren't because of that trait that evolved from this time. So if you ever find yourself playing video games at four in the morning... <laughs> You're, you're, you're a tra- you're, you have a trait that's been passed down since Australopithecus. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting thing we might as well throw in, since we've just kind of been talking all over the place. It says, according I mean, to the chimpanzee fine. genome project, the human chimpanzee last common ancestor existed about five to six million years ago, assuming a right. constant rate of mutation. However, how many species, um, hominin species dated to earlier than that could call this into question? Shirley Anthropos... Chidiensis, I think the T is silent. Tommy called two mides, about seven million years old, and Orantung uh, Tugensis, I think that's the one you mentioned, lived at least six million right. years ago. Since little was known of them, they remain controversial among scientists since the molecular clock in humans has determined that chimpanzees and humans had a genetic split at least a million years later. One theory suggests that the human and chimpanzee lines diverged somewhat at first and then some populations interbred again, basically diverged enough to be considered distinct, but still enough to genetics to be passed to, on even with a breed. lot of infertility. Well, it, it's, it, that's, that's, hmm. yeah, they'll kind of, that, that happened. Of course, there's the classic, some people have Neanderthal blood still in them today, which is often yeah. where we think red hair came and from. Denisovians and also, in that. Also, apparently, I've heard that uh, uh, maybe you told me this. Someone told me this that hmm. uh, people with Neanderthal DNA in them are more susceptible to COVID nineteen. <laughs> so <laughs> they're still. I don't think I told you us. that. I think I told yeah. you that they believe that um, autism might come from it. Oh well, okay, cool. <laughs> well, that does sound we like have... kind of a stretch, but maybe it could be just due to some genes that don't quite gel. Possibly, which creates divergences. possibly, but I don't like. Know. It's interesting you bring up the, the, the diverging point between chimps and humans, because that's, like, a point that a lot of creationists are like, if we evolved from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? And, like, well, we, we evolved... Okay, monkeys is simplifying, of course. And also, it's like, we, we didn't evolve from the current well, day a, primates. Yeah, it's an idiot's evolved- argument anyway. A species can evolve, and that old relic po- um, species can still be there, even as things branch off from it. Like, right. the like, as birds that went we've to the Galapagos, here, us- their ancestors still exist. Like, as we've seen here, Australopithecus mm. was still around when Homo erectus was still around. Mm. So, the Homo last, erectus last was still around when we were still around. Exactly. So, like, and yeah, so it's, it, it, it's happened. And also, it's just yeah. we both evolved from a proto thing that evolved in two of those things. We didn't evolve from the ones that are currently around, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. It's not like Pokemon evolution, which is more like metamorphosis, like cocoon to thing. Uh, but yeah, we're kind of going all over the place also because there's so much to talk about. But again, this is paleo bites, not mm. paleo five course dinners. So <laughs> I think we, I mean, I mean, I think we've kind of summed it up. Basically, it's an early species of ape that evolved into mm. us that, um, but had a lot of different branches that evolved in different because there used to be so many different types of humans. Human yeah. and Homo sapiens are not synonymous. They are now, I guess, mm. because we're the only ones. But the like Neanderthals were another species of human. The, yep. the Flo- Homo florensius, the hobbit people, were another species of human. Like, Homo erectus, mm. another species of human. So Not quite human. Um, another species in the way, like, lions and tigers are separate species, but more like the what you'd get with, like, um, tigers. Well, I don't think it's exactly like lions and tigers. Because Panthera leo and Panthera whatever tiger is. Oh, <laughs> versus... What I mean is that they're, they're clearly fully separate species, even though they can still interbreed, whereas um, Homo sapiens and Neanderthal insects are more like barley tiger and caspian tiger if you get what i mean they're still within the same thing right well it's like it's like panthera mm. panthera leo is the lion and then panther what's the tiger well, hold on panthera what this tigris. is gonna drive me crazy panthera tigris that makes sense <laughs> so uh yeah so that there yeah so versus homo erectus and homo sapiens for instance so 
but yeah. But to be yeah, fair, Panthera is a G is a, it goes really far, like there's like the Jaguar is Panthera, even though it's all in the New World. So. I just looked it up. It's Panthera Tigris Tigris, a bit like Gorilla is Gorilla Gorilla. Oh, there's so many ones like that. Like the North American Plains Bison is Bison Bison Bison. So. Yeah. And the chimpanzee is Pan Troglodytus because we used to think it lived in caves. Oh God, there's some some taxonomists are not clever, but uh, yeah. Uh, basically, Arthur also think it's a very fascinating creature. How it evolved is very fascinating. Human evolution is incredibly fascinating. There's so much we could talk about. I think we've covered the basics so that if listeners are intrigued, they can they can use this as a jumping off point to learn more, which is what I've always intended this podcast to be. This podcast is never meant to be, this is all the information about. This is like, now you know about the initial thing of the creature. If you want to learn more, now you know, now you know that it exists. So, Indeed. So that's that's one of the reasons why I don't mind like Jurassic World or other stuff throwing in random species like Ostro, uh, not Ostro, um, uh, Atrociraptor, even though it doesn't look a lot like it, because now people know that Atrociraptor exists and they can look up the real animal if they want. It gave them the opportunity exactly. they didn't have before. So, so I was so cool going through the Lego aisles and seeing an Ostroraptor. Um, uh, I keep seeing Ostroraptor, Atrociraptor chase sequence and like, chase scene in like a. Uh, in Lego form, so you got Lego <laughs> Atrociraptors. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of Dominion, that chase scene, even though, realistically, those injuries done from, that they had during the run would have killed them, and the fact they couldn't well, and also, run speed when for the, so long. When they're, but it's still when they're cool. following him, when they're following him when the plane is taken off, they must be running about 100 miles an hour, at least, if they're trying to get the yeah. catching up with the plane. And the <laughs> so, human can't even run that fast for that long, so how are they keeping up yeah. with a moving car? But it's fun. But it it is... Cool, and I also like how they're like a dark version of like the evil variants, uh, evil counterparts of the Raptor Squad in the first movie to the point where one of them is named Red. <laughs> yeah. But uh, let's rate mm. Australopithecus 165 million. I'm going to give it like a 57 million because like it's cool, but I don't know. Like I'm not really much of an ape guy. <laughs> I don't yeah, know I'm why. With you, <laughs> like I-, I think it's cool to, from the perspective of showing how we evolved, but apes are mm. gross. Like chimpanzees, gross and also scary. <laughs> like, and if a chimpanzee smiles at you, don't smile back. It's not a happy thing. Uh, it's a warning. Yeah, it's it's baring its teeth in, a, in an aggressive way. So like, yeah, exactly. And like, um, <laughs> I was it the uh, hard way when I volunteered at Wellington Zoo. I smiled at the young. Oh chimp- no! Did you get- he was born around the time I was there, and his mother oh, n- flipped out at the glass. Oh god, that's horrible. Oh, I didn't get injured. Yeah, they're terrified. Like, Chimps are dangerous. Yeah, they are. And also like, I know some people find it interesting that how intelligent they are, like J- like Jane Goodall does and, and like all this which is cool research. But to me since yeah. they're so human like, it's not as impressive to me that they're so intelligent as is like a bird or like a crow, you know, a crow yeah, exactly. or a parrot. Like that that being so intelligent is more impressive to me because they're so unhuman like, <laughs> but they're still so intelligent. So but yeah, I know, I'm not discounting Aust- Australopithecus in terms of its research and what it's done for us, um, our paleontology and, anth- and anthropology in this case almost, mm. uh, is, is quite cool. So, um, so I'll 57 yeah. million. I'll probably rate it 40 million. Yep. 40 million? You got it. All right. So that's it for this week. If you want to get a hold of the show, you can contact me at paleobitespod at gmail.com, paleobitespodcast, no, paleobitespodcast at gmail.com, paleobitespod on Twitter, and paleobitespodcast on just Instagram, or Matthew Donald. Uh, creator on Facebook and Matthew Donald 64 everywhere else so like Instagram TikTok uh, you know Twitter uh, all that sort of stuff it is Twitter me, you can contact me through Matt Don't yep, look yep. if you have anything questions I like my privacy I mean fair enough it's fair enough it's fine uh, I mean I, I've, I've been friends with you for over 15 years and it was only <laughs> like when I started doing this podcast that I first heard your voice <laughs> so <laughs> sure. I think you had seen an image of me before then, though, because I put one on I had, um, the yes. old forms, and I, you said I look like Shia LaBeouf or Balfour Webby said. You no. did. I don't. I don't think you do quite as much now, but you did. No, I Sorry, don't dress that way, and I don't have the same um, facial structures as my nose is broken for a start. And also, you're not nearly as psychologically damaged. <laughs> uh, <sighs> maybe. <laughs> I'm Anyways. pretty. I'm pretty effed in the head. Well, yeah, but we all are to a point. Not to say, like, oh, we're all a little autistic, but, you know, we have no, no, has I their just problems. Mean, I can come up with some incredibly deranged stuff. I just have a good lid on it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, agreed. Uh, same here. <laughs> all right. Yeah. That's it for this week. I'll say end of every episode of Paleo Bites. I mean, there's only one thing to say. It's, ooh, 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 ooh,
<laughs> piece of Jar Jar banana. <laughs> I don't know where that one came uh, from. The disrespect, man. <laughs> All right, bye.